Good morning, Sunday School. This video recording is for April the 12th. Last week, we looked at Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 17, and we saw where God created a perpetual or an everlasting covenant with Noah and his descendants and all of creation. And that promise was never to judge the whole earth again by water. This week, we'll be looking at Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9. And if you don't have your Bibles, I would encourage you to grab them. And while you do, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the sl these slides that I've prepared to help lead us um, in this teaching time. So you will let me share these with you. Okay. And so we always want to begin with our big idea. And our big idea is really the main point of the passage. It's, it's really what we should is really what we should, above all else, what we should know. And it is that in this passage that God scattered the people, accomplishing his purpose. There's four truths as well that we should know. And the first truth is that pride leads to disobedience to God's word. The second truth is that man seeks to make a name for himself apart from God. The third truth is that God confronts sinful rebellion. And the fourth and last truth is that God always does what he has planned. At the end of our teaching time, we'll go back and see how Genesis 11, 1 through 9 connects us to Christ. And we'll also see ways that we can apply this passage to our lives. And so what I want to begin with is just want to, be, want to begin with just a, just a picture here of what we believe that the Tower of Babel probably looked at like. The word Babel actually means confusion. And so this tower, which was, which the Shinerites built on this flat, large plain, um, was in the place that the Bible will call Babylon. And it was a step pyramid there's actually ruins of these step pyramids in Babylon. And you can, uh, you can pause uh, the video here if you'd like so that you can learn a little bit about uh, the Tower of Babel. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move us back up here to the context so we can see everything here. Okay. And so the context for Genesis 11, 1 through 9, is that God had commanded Noah and his descendants to um, repopulate and fill the earth. And that command came with God's blessing. And then what we're going to see is, is that these Noahic nomads, these travelers, they're going to actually move the direction of southeast, and they're going to settle in this large plain called Shinar. And these nomads are united uh, both in language and in purpose. And if we move down here to our first truth, we're going to see that pride leads to disobedience to God's word. And so I'm not going to read the passage again for the sake of time. I'll let you do that. You can now read. You can read verses 1 through 2. You could even look at the last half of verse 4. And what you'll find is that um, beyond just being united in language, the Shinerites were united in rebellion. And being united in rebellion, they were finding and would find opportunity for great sin. And that last half of verse 4, um, we see that their purpose was so that they didn't want to be scattered across the face of the whole, whole earth. And so being united in sin, right, uh, th there was even greater opportunity. So everything that they would do, being united in both language and in sinful purpose would lead to great sin. And so we move down here to our second truth 
is that man seeks to make a name for himself apart from God. And so you can go ahead and read verses three through four. And what you would find is that as the Shinerites, um, there was a there was a, a growing in pride. Um, the normal materials used um, for building were not there on the plain of Shinar, and so uh, using their their ingenuity or using their using their minds and their skill, they began um, to make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And as they learned uh, to make building materials, they had the sinful idea um, to, to build a city and a tower for themselves. And we will see in the Bible, um, the Bible always equates a city with strength and a tower with security. And they were they were being united. They were finding their strength and their security, not in God, but in themselves. It demonstrated that, that they had no faith in God. Um, it, uh, it also says that they had a fear over being separated. And so this fear over being separated, this growing pride in themselves, this lack of faith and trust in God led them to do these things. It led them to travel as one group and settle in one place and start to build a city in a tower. And, and it, was really, um, it was really to the elevation of their own name. And, and really, um, one of the, the purposes of God is that when we submit to him and to his word, um, his name is to, be, is to be elevated or glorified in all of the earth. We're never to seek our own fame or to seek the, the good of our own name. It's always to be, to be done in the one who created us and has given us so many blessings. And so we'll go to our third truth and we'll see that God confronts sinful rebellion. And how does he do that? Well, if you read verses five through seven, is that God is going to, it was, it was in this one language, united in this one language that they were to able to accomplish so much of their sinful purposes. And so God cannot allow that to continue. Um, because God has commanded um, Noah and his descendants, who these Shinarites are of, they are of Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, and um, they God is going to do what He has purposed. And so, God, it's the Bible says, looked down from heaven. It's not that God did not know what was going on. Obviously, God is all knowing; He knows everything. But it. It, it speaks of that he came down and, and he took took notice of what they were doing. And so how is he going to frustrate their plans and their purposes and bring about his own? Well, he's going to confuse their language. And that was specifically so they could not do all the sinful things that they had planned. And then our fourth truth is we see is that God always does what he has planned. If you read verses eight through nine, you're going to find that God is going to scatter the people. They, they are going to do what he has planned. They are going to repopulate and fill the whole earth. And, and so as God confuses the language, um, if any of you at, in your household are able to, to speak uh, another language, maybe it's Spanish or um, maybe um, Maybe it's um, German or French, or I'm learning a little bit of Hebrew right now. When I speak to my family in another language, they don't understand what I'm saying. So if, if I seek to uh, plan and purpose to do something or, or ask them to do something, they won't understand what I'm doing. And eventually they're going to get frustrated with me and they're going to go off and do their own thing. And that's exactly what we see here 
Uh, if you were to step back into chapter 10, you will see what we call the Table of Nations. The Table of Nations is really, um, it, it helps to explain to us um, uh, all the peoples of the earth and how they got to where um, they were and, and where they settled. And so we're going to move up here to the Christ connection. And in your own time, I would encourage you to, to look, uh, go into the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 4, 8, 33, and 38, and 39. I, I know that's a lot of verses, um, really. That's just a, a few verses that summarize verse 12 and, and, and help to, to give us an understanding of how this passage is connected to Christ. And so as God looked down from heaven and he saw the, the, the united people and in sinful purpose, God confused the language and he scattered the people into many nations. Who, when we read Acts chapter 2 and we look at these verses specifically, we'll see that from heaven the Father and Christ send the Holy Spirit. And this is the, and in the sending of the Holy Spirit, it's the beginning of the new covenant, which is we call the church age. And then where God confused the language up here. What God does is, is that God um, gave uh, his disciples uh, um, a miraculous ability to speak in languages they had never learned so that people from other nations that did not speak the same language as the disciples could understand. They could understand the word of Christ. They could understand the gospel. And so we see, um, and th this, this speaking in tongues was for a limited time. It was for the birth of the church. But what this teaches us and how this connects us to Christ is that every tribe and every language and every nation in the church age, that all people are joined to God through salvation in Jesus Christ, through the proclamation of the gospel. And so that's how this passage connects us to Christ. And how should we apply um, uh, Genesis 11, 1 through 9 to our lives? First, it teaches us to submit to the word of God, that we should resist the temptation to go our own way and to do our own thing and not to listen to what God has said in his word, the Bible. And secondly, it teaches us to be humble like Christ. Christ was obedient to the Father, and by being obedient, by being humble and submissive to God through his word, we bring glory to God's name and not our own. And um, in these things, we do not um, act like um, the Shinerites. We do not come under the judgment of God, and actually we fulfill um, God's word. We've helped to fulfill his purposes. We, we show that we are citizens of the kingdom, that we have repented and believed in Christ. And so I hope uh, this is helpful. And um, I pray that you are, you and your family are blessed um, by God's word and Genesis 11, 1 through 9. I continue to pray um, for all of you, uh, all of you, um, that you remain well and even more so um, that you find your ultimate salvation, your deliverance, and your rescue in Jesus Christ. So thank you for spending a couple of moments uh, with me this morning, and I look forward to <laughs> gathering together with you and as I know all of you are, are looking forward to gathering together as the church. And so um, thank you much.